Yeah, we'll, we'll start now with it. People will join when they are coming. So we'll go through the questions and uh, while going through the questions, we'll uh, co uh, cover some concepts related to the topics you know, that is discussed in the week. So for week eight, yeah, so we will discuss week eight, week eight content, uh, CNN, RNN, and uh, drones and all, I'm not very keen on interesting. We'll just look at some uh, one or two problems related to drone. And uh, yeah, we'll uh, we'll look at some of the problems related to uh, transformers also. Uh, so uh, so I, I would confess that I don't know about the transformers, like how they work. I know that uh, uh, CN, uh, RNN is better than uh, CNN in some case. We have time series related problems when one output depends on the previous output and uh, it has some problems related to exploding gradient and uh, vanishing gradient so because of that we use uh, lstm long term long term short term memory and then better than that is the transformer but i am not very familiar with the transformer so we'll just discuss two questions or uh, two or three questions based on the PPT that was shared uh, based on the class discussions and uh, we'll wrap up the session. But we'll uh, see the principal working of RNN in uh, clearly. And I will also share uh, one video that will explain why actually we need RNN. We'll see one uh, short video, YouTube video. You might have seen it in the uh, as a meme. Yeah, so we'll take a look at it. Okay, so some questions related to CNN and general neural network. So fill in the blanks. So why don't you give it a shot and uh, then I will explain what is what is going on here. So I'll be waiting for the answer. You can type it in the chat or you can unmute and you can see. So what is the you know, dash extends the area of an image in which CNN processes? Which of the following actually extends the area of an image in which the convolution neural network is going to go through the normal processes of uh, convolution and pooling and fully connected and all that. Okay. So the answer is padding okay so now let's understand what does uh, this padding means so if you recall from our convolution neural network i discussed that uh, we have image which is basically some values of red blue green in uh, in a matrix format and these matrix entries we call them as pixels so this is a pixel and it, all these things have some entries and when we are looking for some things in an image so basically cnn is used for image classification uh, no sorry uh, computer vision so when we uh, are scanning the image uh, we have high resolution images so we uh, we cannot scan or give the input of all these things at once into our into any model it will be too much for so what we do, we have some filters uh, that are another matrices. Also, they are called kernels. So what these filters do is that they scan the entire image. They basically scan the entire image going by uh, order through all the matrices, sub matrices inside the image. So we have, let's say, uh, this this is our filter. Let me use a different color. So I said that this filter, this is three by three. So first it will go this three by three portion of the image, then this three by three, then this, then the last three by three, and uh, then it will move one one step down, and it will go on doing this and scanning the entire image. And the step which it takes moves right, you know, by one by one. So that is the stride. So that is this type. Now, what is padding? So, what ends up happening? So, let's discuss why padding is actually required. What's 
what ends up happening is let's say we have this uh, three by three right this is a three by three and this is uh, one two three four five by five so when we do this uh, kernel filtering from uh, using our filter and uh, to this image so this image now becomes uh, the image dimension reduces right so it becomes let's say so this will be one then two then three so it will become a three by three image maybe i should remove this uh, an extra part then it is going to become a three by three image and how it became i discussed one formula last time so if you have doubt you can go and check that formula so it becomes a three by three image now and this is uh, called one convolution one convolution some images or some classification or some kind of computer vision techniques need more than one convolution and when you do that your matrix size will keep on decreasing and but uh, when you are doing something with an image you don't want your image to just reduce to one value if that happens like if the size of the matrix is one by one if that happens then you have lost so much information we have kind of averaged out whatever was given in your image so to do that what they do they add extra what is padding padding is adding oh so it's nice padding is adding extra pixels with no values at the extremities of the already existing image at the uh, uh, extremities of the image okay so what does it look like in the in uh, in actual when you are representing it in a graph so it will look like that if you have a, let's say after one convolution so you can do it in any point of time any layer inside your uh, uh, convolution network you can do it you not not necessarily you have to do it in the starting of the convolution you can do it in the middle also okay so you have this your 3 by 3 after one convolution what you will do is you will add pixels on the extremities like this so now you have a 5 by 5 again right so when uh, then if you want to use you can use a 3 by 3 uh, thing again 3 by 3 filter again and then you will get a again 3 by 3 after the second convolution so you have not lost the data your your image is not just one number after this operation so these uh, and these one thing to note that these pixels will have the values of zero as we know that uh, multi scale uh, multi spectral images or uh, some binary images will have some zero one values and uh, there is a gray scale where the value varies from 0 to 255 so these uh, inside things will have those values but the outside will have zero so that it doesn't interfere with our uh, training of the convolution neural network okay so is there anything i'm missing yeah, one more thing why this uh, padding is done is to increase the significance of the edges or edge entries so let's look at this filtering and how it actually uh, contributes to the sorry how it actually contributes to the final after this uh, after filtering of an image so if you have i am just going to use highlighter here if you have a 4x4 four four and you are doing a filtering using a 3x3 three three, so let's see how many times the value of one filter is going to come when we are doing filtering so first time you did 3x3 three three, yes so this edge this one let's uh, look at this edge or look at these edges 
the corner will only come once i'm going to tell ahead itself and uh, the edge the lines edge lines will come uh, maybe uh, two times whereas the other values are uh, other values are going to come more than uh, more than two times so so let's say instead of uh, three by three let's say we are using a two by two so this is a two by two so one this time this corner has come into our analysis averaging but the next time this filter is going to move to this and this and when it goes to this particular last uh, two by two subset of this matrix it is going to move down and then this so you see this entry of this matrix this image has come four times one for this four pair one for this one for this and one for this so too much significance or weightage is being given to this particular pixel whereas this outer edge of this pixel of this image is only coming once and these uh, edge lines the pixels across the edge lines they are coming only uh, twice but the inside is coming four times so this can cause uh, some kind of uh, overfitting or it can cause some kind of bias in your uh, computer vision techniques so that's why uh, you can also use uh, this padding so if you have done padding now you will realize that let's look at this figure that your filter if you have two by two filter it is going to go here here and then when it comes down it is going to come here and here so now you see this pixel that was the corner pixel of our image has also come four times right so because it has become a, uh, actually it has become an internal pixel so it will come similar number of times as any other internal pixel and since these values are zero they are not going to play much role and this the in, the value that is coming from the first filter is going to have only the value from this outer or edge pixel so this is the importance or significance of padding why that's why we do padding Okay, so now I have explained this padding. This is also related to padding. This question is also related to padding. Why don't you answer this question? So, in order to work, the kernel with pre-processing an image padding is added to dash frame of the image. So basically, it is asking uh, where in the frame of the image, in the matrix of the image, padding is actually done. Is it in the in in inner image or the inter? Sorry. Inner uh, inner frame of the image, outer frame of the image, center of the image, or uh, padding doesn't add anything to the image. What do you think? Oh, okay. So one participant has left us. So maybe I should not ask the questions, but I'm still going to ask the question. So the answer is pretty simple. If you remember what I drew when I was talking about padding, so this is your frame of the image, and padding is done outer frame to the outer frame of the image. Okay, this is the answer. Okay, let's go to the next question. So, DAS is a research problem in uh, which in machine learning that focuses on storing knowledge gained while solving one problem and applying it to a different but related problems. So, I have not used this, but it is also very uh, you know, it is a very nice uh, technique. So, what is uh, what this question is asking is which of these uh, following options or techniques? uses the information that you learned while you were training for one model into some another model so let's say you are uh, trying to make a model that identifies cars in an image so let's say you are uh, training a model that identifies car uh, in an image where is the car so usually the result of the convolution neural network will look like this is your image 
final result will look like okay this is where the car is this is where the car is something like this now you are training your model to do this and while doing so you gave the model images of lots of things so input or the training data it will have images of trucks trees and some other other things so lot of other things you have to give so that your model can distinguish between different different uh, features so what is happening actually is you are calculating the success of your model based on whether it predicted the cars accurately or not but there may also be uh, the case that your model is also learning or it has assigned some value to truck on its own and some value to trees so wherever there is a tree or a truck in your uh, photo it is actually getting a value of let's say if the car is less, let's say 1 1 1 it is giving it a value of 2 and 3 wherever the truck and the trees are there but since you are not uh, interested in that you are not actually using that uh, value but maybe your model is training on that so you can use this already trained model or the uh, value of the biases and the weights of this model in your own model and you can check in your some other model and you can check whether it is giving a good significance or good identification for uh, trees or trucks also so that will happen because uh, a model will especially this convolution neural network it tries to identify the edges and all the other things so if you have sufficient images of trucks and trees it will in advertently train itself to give some value to the trucks and trees but you will not know because we are not knowing that so yeah you can actually train the model and uh, use this uh, based on the uh, weights of the uh, way, uh, the sorry based on the values of weights and bias and use it to the uh, what do you say another model so this is called transfer learning because you are transferring the learning that you have done in one model to some other model transfer learning okay so this is the answer yeah i want some uh, answers so try to answer uh, this is not a question related to uh, much of the techniques it is just a theory question so how many convolution layers and uh, fully connected layers are there in vgg 16 architecture so one of the architecture that sir mentioned very you know uh, is an important and won some awards also in some 2014 um, ms classification competition so just a theory question how many convolution layers and uh, fully connected layers are there in pgg 16 so since it is 16 it has uh, a total of 16 layers if you don't want to remember all that so that means uh, it should have a sum of the fully connected and convolution layers as uh, 16 so we have that one option that satisfies that that is 13 convolution layer and three fully connected layers so this is the answer Okay. I have already discussed so the architecture of VG uh, VGG sixteen. I have discussed it uh, last session, so I didn't know that he is going to discuss the architecture in this week. So, and I thought convolution neural network arch architecture is important. That's why I discussed it uh, last session itself. So, just um, more number of convolutions are there in that. Otherwise, the basic uh, filtering and then uh, we talked about uh, different filters, right? so making a 2d image into 3d based on the various number of filters so one filter will give this matrix another filter will give this matrix if you remember i told like that so it is doing that so i have already discussed these things and also it is not very important for this uh, level of course <coughs> yeah so we will not go through that again okay so next question this term is used in machine learning and indicates the number of passes of entire training data set the machine learning algorithm has completed so it is very important this uh, this question actually it may not 
look important but it is a very basic fundamental question that you will know when you have actually trained your model so uh, i'll i'll wait if you want to give the answer and then i will explain because you may know the answer but you may not still know the significance of this uh, answer C. Oh, very good. So, Gulshan Taj has correctly said C. So, now I feel more comfortable sharing the information that I am about. Okay. So, this is related to training of your machine learning model. What happens is, uh, you uh, in machine learning, in ML models, when you are training them, you need huge data set. If you want anything to be commercially viable or people uh, to use it, you actually need huge data set in different, different scenarios, right? So when you are training your data, when you are training your model on the data, you cannot train the model with all data at once. Because no system, maybe some uh, Hi-Fi system in foreign, it is there, uh, they can do that. But no commercial system or no system that is accessible to the developers actually has the memory to do the matrix operations that will be required if you are using a very huge data. Okay, so that's why what is done is data is data set is divided into batches okay now you let's say you have some x y and you have here 10 power 6 data set means you have 10 power 6 that is how much one zero 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 so you have a uh, yeah you have 10 lakhs of uh, data. So then you will divide it, the 10 lakhs into some groups or batches. So let's say you divided it into 10 batches with 1 lakhs in each. Maybe you have a very high fi system yourself because still for 1 lakh we need a very good computation power and memory requirement. So you did that and you have 1 lakh data set in each of the batch. Uh, so what you will do, so the training of this is uh, a wonderful, you know, wonderful way this training works to avoid overfitting also. Okay, so one more problem with this uh, data set, even though, so even if you have a very high system to, you know, train with all the data set at once, it can cause overfitting. So maybe I will write it here so that training with... Uh, Training with all data set can cause overfitting. All data set at once, yeah. At once can cause overfitting. So what we do is we perform, let's talk about, let's say CNN. Let's say we are talking about neural network itself. So we perform uh, forward propagation and backward propagation to modify the our parameters once with one batch so let's say we initialize so this is our uh, let's say this is our neural network and this is our output so we have some kind of uh, connections here right so there will be several more connections i'm not just drawing them so we have these weights and biases here we have these weights and biases here so what we initialized first and then for our first batch we did the forward propagation to get the values of y and using those values of y we did one backward propagation also to modify our weights and biases so then our work is done with the first batch now we move on to the second batch now using these now modified uh, 
biases from the first batch we are going to do the forward propagation on the second batch and you, the backward propagation on the second batch and then again modify our weights and biases so it may you may not know exactly um, you know but intuitively you will feel that this is slightly different than the regular uh, validation or regular training because what we do in regular training we take the data we do the forward propagation and we get the values of y and then we uh, keep on changing the weights and biases till the difference in the predicted value of y and the actual value of, from the observation is minimum but here we are not doing that here what we are doing is we are using one batch only once and we are using it to modify our parameters and then we are using second batch and then we are modifying our parameters we are not using one batch till we are oh sorry we are not using one batch till we minimize the error between the predictions and the observations we are only using it to update the parameters because why why we are doing that to avoid overfitting because if you train your model parameters to match uh, to minimize the errors in the first batch it may not be good good enough for the second batch so to make a general model a generalized model we go through these batches one by one and keep updating our parameters but in that case what will happen you may not be able to get a final solution and you may not be able to get a minimum uh, minimum error between the convergence sorry between the prediction and the observation so what you do is you go through your data the total data set more than once and that number is called it bosh so this is how basically uh, this, whatever i have said this is to summarize this. so you have some models model parameter w and b you go through batch 1 you get w1 b1 new models you go through batch 2 you get w2 b2 because uh, from forward uh, forward and backward propagation you will update your uh, parameters so you do that and let's say you went through batch 10 and you get w10 b10 now this is one epoch you have went through your data that is divided into 10 batches once but still you may not be getting the minimum error so what you do you use this w10 and b10 and do this again and then get w11 b11 w12 b12 and then you get w20 b20 and then do it again so sometimes you will see in your uh, if you have seen any uh, machine learning videos and they will say epoch 100 so then they will go through this uh, data 100 times and then they are going they are uh, optimizing their uh, parameters one uh, like uh, every time uh, through one one batch they are not like fixing uh, uh, one batch and then getting a, a weights and bias for the minimum difference they are just calculating the difference and meanwhile they are uh, uh, no moving forward so i hope you understand this i'll wait if you don't understand this you can ask question because this is uh, related to validation when you have very huge data this is important that's why actually these uh, tra training models take a lot of time yesterday i was uh, working on a competition actually there is uh, there is a comp i will share the, the link so there is a competition in iit madras where we have to uh, train a deep learning model with uh, for a c data so to give the waves height with related to some data so uh, i had to give a poshi so i gave a poshi of 100 a poshi of 100 so it took uh, around i think uh, more than half an hour or training of the data it will depend on how many layers you are also using but that's why i was not showing the things in the class so i hope this is clear uh, if there is any doubt you can ask me in whatsapp
Okay, good. Yeah, so then we have some drone questions. I'll just wait for your answer. What is the full form of UAV used in precision agriculture? So, okay. Yeah, good. Uh, so, Bridgen has answered directly. Is unmanned aerial vehicle. Okay, and... Uh, the, uh, I think this is the most significant question that we can get related to drones relevant to us. Uh, that is, which is the following state? Which of the following statement is true for payload? So it is the weight of the drone. So it is the weight a drone or UAV can carry. It includes the additional weight drone can drones can carry. B and C. Very good. Question has uh, again sent the right answer. So I, I don't know whether it's, uh, these questions are from this week or last week. So you know the answer or you already don't know the answer. But uh, Gulshan is answering and I'm very happy. Okay, good. So that's all about drones that we'll discuss in this session. Let's come to the recurrent neural network. A very interesting topic. I you know sometimes I wonder like how these people come up uh, with these ideas. You know, it is, uh, it is next level intelligence or IQ. So uh, recurrent neural network is a type of what? Random forest classification or uh, regression or artificial neural network, machine learning, artificial intelligence. B, correct. So random, uh, sorry, recurrent neural network is a type of artificial neural network. It is also a machine learning tool because we are discussing it in a machine learning class. But then it is uh, very closely uh, related to artificial neural network than to machine learning. Because in machine learning, we, there, will be, there will be linear regression, there will be random forest, there will be KNN and all those things. So that's why this B option is correct. Okay. So let's discuss about recurrent neural network. Very interesting topic. So before we do that, I want to show you one video. Yeah. So let's see. That will actually explain. So yeah, let's let's just talk about a little bit of theory of uh, recurrent neural network. Then we'll uh, see that video. That will explain the importance of uh, RNN. So what is RNN? Uh, the full form recurrent neural network. And then where is it useful? So when your next output let's say you have already done one input and one output when your next output output based on your next input depends on your previous output of uh, no previous uh, output then we have to use something called uh, a recurrent neural network then the model that we use to predict this next output is the recurrent neural network. What, uh, why can't we do it in CNN? Because CNN know, uh, needs to know one input and it doesn't care about what happened earlier. So if you have some independent input and independent output, then you can use CNN, ANN and uh, DL and uh, you can go get away with it. But if your uh, the next output or the next expected output actually is dependent on your previous input then you have to use rnn like uh, stock markets so when to predict the stock of uh, uh, you know predict the rise or fall of a stock you need to know whether that uh, stock has been rising from the past or has it been dropping from the past otherwise you won't be able to make a, a legitimate prediction and another thing is about translation so yeah, we don't need to talk so your uh, one word so if, if you can say that no no how you can you say that translation needs uh, you know the rnn because each each word we can actually translate into their corresponding different language and uh, we have the translation but now the video that i am going to show it is actually going to show that uh, how is it you know just uh, something uh, for you to to make this fun this screen, right? I don't know if this is allowed or not. 
Okay, so maybe it is not working out. Just give me a minute. So you are able to see my screen, right? Yeah, so my screen is visible, but this is not. Okay, so I will I probably have to do this on my tab. So let me just stop sharing it once and then I'll share with you when I have that. this and there is that I am still not very comfortable with using an iPad I bought it for the sessions only but you know, I am still not very familiar with it yeah so let's see Okay, yeah, so you are able to see my screen, right? See this video. Oh, the microphone is off. So you see here, okay. So see, uh, yeah. Oh my God. You see that this guy wants uh, the taxi driver to drop him at certain location. And uh, he didn't use RNN for uh, doing the translation. He used uh, CNN. So drop me there. Uh, so this is just a problem with the, I think the sub captioning of the YouTube algorithm. But to drop him uh, on that location, he is saying decrease me there because if you translate, just drop and decrease. The meaning of these two things are not very different and then leave me alone and then so on so you can go ahead and watch this video it's a very funny video and i thought this actually represents very nicely why we need or the importance of a recurrent neural network okay yeah something now let's uh, try to see the uh, architecture of the recurrent neural network so because in the recurrent neural network, we'll know that decrease me there, if it is trained properly, it doesn't make any sense. So instead of decrease, it will sh uh, choose drop me there, right? And leave me alone and all those things uh, will not happen. Okay, so let's see how this works. So when you have a, a compact notation, when you do a compact notation of uh, RNN, it looks something like this. That is Y, that is output, that is X, <clears throat> that is input, and these are your hidden layers. Oh, okay, so how we get at this? This also was confusing to me when I looked it at the start. So let me let me just start with basic ANN representation. You have these inputs, you have these hidden layers, and then you have this output, and you have them some kind of um, fully connected network between them. Okay, I'm not just drawing the whole thing. So what you can do is you can have this as X, all these things as H, and this as Y. So I'm just grouping them. 
and uh, giving uh, telling them as x h and y so this is what is represented when we are writing our uh, recurrent neural network as like uh, in this way so the connections are similar to the any normal uh, the ann or deep neural network so don't get uh, you know uh, confused by seeing this connection this connection is like this only it is just uh, for simplicity it is shown like this okay so that's uh, so then that is a way that is that is done one thing different in uh, neural net recurrent neural network is it uses this value again so this is the complete representation of your uh, recurrent neural network so how do we understand this to understand this let's expand this and this is this loop no this loop is actually based on the time or uh, one input of the uh, one input after the other based on that this uh, loop occurs so if you have one input let's say this is the first input so there won't be any uh, no any kind of input from the previous because this is the first so this this won't be there so let's say this is x1 and then y1 and then h1 so this is something but when we go for the second input so we'll have x2 h2 and y2 and this is the new information or this is the information that it is getting from the previous inputs uh, values okay so how does how does this work let's try to understand this how to explain this nicely so uh, the neural network uh, will have some kind of weights and biases right so this neural network let's say the uh, weights of this neural network were w uh, and uh, and biases were b so and this neural network also it is the same as the uh, one we used for the first input just the input and output have changed and there is one more uh, you know one more additional input is coming to this so that is why it is said that all the parameters of the neural network of the like different layers that you see are the same because they are actually the same so let me how do i explain this nicely let's see let's take an example let's say you have x1 as coming as the input and then how you calculate y so you multiply let's say it is only one uh, layer one inherent layer so you multiply x1 with some weights and then add with the bias so that's that gives you z value and then y1 is nothing but activation of that uh, z1 right this is how the forward propagation occurs now this activation function can be relu or it can be uh, you know it can be sigmoid function that we have discussed so it, it depends on this classification or regression problem so this is how the first one comes now the second one so the second input let's say now we want to compute the second so it will be z2 is equal to x2 into b into w and that w is same as the w and this b is same but there will be an addition from the information that you are getting from this first one so it will be h1 into w dash and then this will be added to the bias and this will be z2 and y2 again will be activation of z2 this is the simplest way we can understand this recurrent neural network that view uh, when you are computing the second no you don't go all the way to your calculation of y1 in the previous one don't go all the way just go till here just input the value of your x1 into your h1 and uh, use uh, you know into the hidden layer and use the output that you get from that into the h2 so basically if i want to write it more simply uh, more in simple manner to uh, to make you understand then i can write even z1 into uh what do you say w1 w dash so you did uh, you input your value x1 into this uh, hidden layer and then what you get you get z1 only right and then you do the activation function and then you get the final output so you get that z1 
with or without this uh, bias and uh, you put it into the second uh, no put it into the value or add it into the value just before going to the uh, activation function you add it and then you get another z2 so let me write i don't know how to draw this more nicely let me draw it something like this so okay so yeah i will draw something here and then i will erase it because i need some space to uh, explain some more things so this is your x1 and uh, this is your hidden layer it does some computation and it gives you z that give, goes into the activation function and gives you y1 and the parameters are all the same for everything and this is your x2 and y2 so how does this work and so on let's say uh, and so on all these things are there so to compute x uh, the output for y1 it is standard you go through x1 uh, go through hidden layer and then you get the y1 but to compute x2 you go through x2 come to the hidden layer you got something z2 but that z2 is not complete because you need to add the entries from your uh, first input so z2 actual z2 will be x2 into w plus x1 into w1 plus b so let's say this yeah so this is your x1 and uh, here it is z that is x1 into w plus b and y1 is uh, nothing but activation function of z1 and here when you are seeing so there is a new weight for this that is w dash and it is what it is doing it is just uh, taking in the value of z some some portion of the z and giving it to the uh, second input so that is no I, do, I should not do this z x1 it is z1 into the w dash and then uh, if you have another third one then it is like x3 i'm just saying them uh, h2 h1 uh, h2 h3 but their parameters will still be the same and y3 uh, let's solidify this by using one more example so yeah one more uh, recurrence so h3 will be what z3 is equal to x 3w plus w dash so this parameter also will not change w dash also and into z2 plus b you understand and similarly you can go and go on and do it but here is a question uh, the answer of which is going to explain one crucial part or the disadvantage of uh, recurrent neural network so how do we know how many recurrences we have to use in the recurrent neural network it so the answer to that question i don't expect you to answer that but the actual answer to this question is it depends on the uh, length of the sentence or the length of the data you have or you want to use so uh, take take the share market example so if you want to predict what is uh, going to be the stock prices uh, tomorrow then you can train a model that is trained so uh, by using only previous day data in that case you will need only two recurrences of the recurrent neural network one is that yesterday and then then today something like that and you can also train the recurrent neural network based on past 10 datas or past 5 datas and in that case you will need 5 or 10 respective uh, you know recurrences of your neural network so that how that is how this length of this neural network is designed and that is the problem that actually leads to a problem in the neural network that is the exploding gradient and vanishing gradient so le let me explain to you how this works 
what is actually happening look at this uh, w1 let me use a highlighter look at sorry look at this w1 it is being multiplied to h1 right and then added to z2 but when we are going through uh, to calculate z3 it is being multiplied to uh, first it multiplied to z1 then it is being multiplied to z2 but z2 already has z1 so by this point of time this value uh, this z value z has been multiplied with this w two times right when we go third one then this z2 is multiply or the fourth one the z the z will be multiplied with w three times so if this w sorry if this z is for by any chance greater than 1 and w is greater than 1 or let's say it is 2 and uh, you are doing something uh, some prediction of stock prices based on the previous 50 data then you see that finally in Z50, or you will have something like W to the power 49 into Z. 2 to the power 49 into Z. And then uh, this is going to create, no, this is a very high value. So that's why like, it's called like uh, exploding gradient problem because you are going to use these uh, values to compute the gradients. So then they are going to transfer to the gradients also. So that's why there is a problem with recurrent neural network. Now you can say, sir, okay, uh, maybe it is going uh, to a very high value. Why don't we keep it less than one so that uh, W power very high value, it doesn't go very, you know, uh, very far, very huge number. Then in the, that case, you will have a vanishing gradient problem because it will become so small that it is not going to account for the uh, weightage of Z and the gradient is going to become very less. So these are the two problems that are there in the uh, recurrent neural network that are that is solved by uh, long term, short term memory and uh, transforms. So let me state the problem here. That is exploding gradient, vanishing gradient problem in RMM. Even though it is so much better, so good, it still has some problems. Okay, uh, I think I have tried to cover the architecture of uh, RNN. Mm, yeah, this is it's fine enough. If you need some more details, I'll be sharing uh, a video. You can uh, watch that. Mm -hmm. I'm not talking about this video in the YouTube. I'm talking about some other video in YouTube, which explains clearly about this RNN. <clears throat> okay, so now uh, try to answer this question. This is just basic theory question from the slide. So what are the different types of recurrent neural networks? One, one, one to one. So one to many, many to many, all of these. So one to one means one input, one output. One to many means one input, many output. Many to many means many input, many output. So if you recall, in the PPT, sir showed something like this. One input, one output. Okay. Then there can be one input, many output, sorry. One input, many output. Then there can be many input and many output. So all these scenarios are possible in <coughs> a recurrent neural network. So that's uh, so the answer for this question of what is the different type of recurrent neural network is all of this. Okay. Okay, another theory question. Which uh, of the following is 
network architecture of RNA. VGG16, uh, that we already know, it is a convolution neural network. RES50 is option or BRNA. So, what is the answer to this question? Which of this is BRNA? Yes. So, what is BRNA? BRNA is bidirectional recurrent neural network. What is the basic difference between uh, BRNN and uh, RNN? It is that let's say this is your uh, three input, three output recurrent neural network. So the basic uh, approach or the flow of information in recurrent neural network is from previous time step to the future time step. But in case of uh, this uh, bidirectional recurrent neural network, as the name, in the name itself it is there, bidirectional. So the flow of information can be from the future to the back also. Future times, future input to the back input also. I should not say future. So this is the additional line or the flow of information that is there in the uh, bidirectional recurrent neural network. So if you want to write it in uh, mathematical terms, so then Z1 can also be like XT minus 1 or ZT minus 1 can be written as XT minus 1 W plus XT, sorry, zt what is that xt into w plus b and then into uh, w dash for this let's say this is w dash one and the forward going is w dash uh, two so this is w dash one plus b so something like that i'm not saying this is exactly what will happen but something like that you can understand that t minus one is influenced by t Okay, and then uh, it is. It would be weird a little bit to write this uh, because then you will have something like this for the T, right? W dash two I have written. That is the weightage for moving forward. So just to explain what is going on. Okay. Now, BPTT algorithm is used in which of the following neural networks? Have we covered the question? Yeah, BPTT algorithm is uh, used in which of the following neural network? What is BPTT? What is the full form of BPTT? What do you, uh, do you remember? Uh, can anyone tell in the chat? Okay, so BPTT is nothing but back propagation through time. This back propagation is used to calibrate your parameters. So, back propagation through time. And when we say time, where do we use time? We use time in recurrent neural network. Okay, so that is the answer. Now, what do we understand by this? What is the meaning of this? So, let's understand this uh, by using our uh, this example. Okay, so you see, we have one single set of parameters for our neural network that is w that is w b and w dash and we are using it in a recurrent manner to give predictions y1 y1 y3 and so on till y50 let's say 
So how do we compute the error? We compute the error by adding the values in time. So how does this uh, actually propagates? Is there will be a loop will, uh, which will ask us to run this recurrent neural network again and again and again. So and uh, when we compute y1, it will uh, it will be the first time it has gone through the loop. Then we will add the value of the difference between y1 and the pre uh, actual value of y1. y1 predicted and actual value of y1. Then in the second loop, it is going to use not the information of y1, but it is still going to propagate through this. Right. And then it is going to compute y2. Then we uh, no, we have first added this, this in the error. Then we do the second addition of uh, the subtraction or whatever the kind of error you have, RMSC, root mean square or something. Then we compute the second error. And we go on and keep on adding this error one by one through time as we go through the information. So this is why and then we have the total error and then we try to minimize it. So this is why it is called back propagation through time. And uh, that is used in RNA. Okay, so now if you understand this answer this question which of the following sums error at each time step which of the following algorithm or uh, mention options sums the error at each time step okay answer my one informal question if you are not able to answer that do we compute error in feed forward Yes or no answer. No, very good. Wilson has then uh, we don't compute in feed forward because in feed forward we uh, just computing the output error computation and uh, the things happens in the uh, back propagation. Okay. Feed forward is just prediction. Error computation is something else. So, uh, back propagation through time is the answer for this question. So, I told answer because uh, this third option is just nothing but feed forward and back propagation to, together. So, when once you say feed forward is not the option, it is very high probability that uh, BPTT is the option. So, that's why you took And I have explained this that uh, moving through time we compute the error by going into the loop again and again and computing the values okay so uh, then we are near ending our session yeah so this is a question based on the slide itself we will not go into much of the detail regarding the transformers basically what transformers do i'll just uh, explain in uh, two three minutes is that they have an image they divide this image uh, as uh, as in ppt as sir showed i will uh, draw it here there is a tree they divide this image into parts then this is one part so let's say this was one part which was having some portion of the tree here right based on this then they flatten it what does what do we mean by flatten so these things will have some entries this is a matrix uh, 5 by 5 so they will get a 25 by 1 uh, array from this and they will use this array to uh, and the uh, reduce its dimension so let's say you have a 25 by 1 they will do some operation to reduce the dimension of this array and then they will uh, feed it to a transformer which will give some id to this array and then we do this for the for all the parts of the images that you have you know, one by one one by one 
and then you train your model. So this is uh, a very uh, weird kind of explanation, and uh, but still, it, I, as I said, it is not very important, and I'm also not very familiar with it, so I don't want to just uh, waste time on this. That's why I took more time to explain the recurrent neural network. Okay, so that's just some uh, minimal minimalist kind of explanation for transformers. So based on the PPT, uh, I want you to answer these three questions for transformers. That is that will cover everything. So a deep learning model that adopts the mechanism of self attention, differentially weighting the significance of each part. Uh, of the input data is called what? So when I didn't know about this transformer, I was inclined to give the answer as CNN because CNN has filters that look for each features, and then that's how the you know, identification or object detection works. But this is uh, this has mentioned the mechanism of self attention which is uh, done in the transformers so what they do is even after you have given them this uh, matrix of input and they have uh, done this operation they are going to when you are training them they are going to get trained in such a way that they are going to reduce these values to a non significant part in this matrix because if they are, if like you are training to detect the tree then they are going to reduce these values these other values to non significant part so that they don't interfere with the uh, value that is uh, for the green pixel so that is what self uh, attention means so they know that which value is more significant and they give more significant uh, the more attention to that value Okay, the mechanism of employing similar pixel in training and prediction and ignoring dissimilar pixel is called what? Oh, so I didn't notice that uh, there was no answer for the last question. Let's try this question. The mechanism of employing similar pixel in training and prediction and ignoring dissimilar pixel is called I just explained it is very similar to the last thing that we heard. So we have come into the topics of transformers. So in that transformers, as I told that when it is training, it is going to give more significance to the pixels that are giving more uh, accuracy. <clears throat> that is the self attention that I was talking about. So this is the mechanism that uh, uh, employs that similar pixel in training and prediction and ignores the dissimilar pixel. So this is self attention. Okay, just now this is just a mathematics uh, question. This I think you should know. Uh, I think both of you should answer this question. What is the uh, correct representation, correct representation of F1 score? A, correct. Gulshan has uh, said correctly that F1. And this is used for uh, just basically getting the accuracy of your uh, some, represent, some kind of representation of accuracy of your model. And uh, how do we calculate this? Which table do we need to get this? There is one specific name for that table. Do you remember uh, Gulshan? Some table matrix. I will draw that. Maybe you can tell the name. Okay, so this is true, positive, false, positive, something. Uh, sorry. Something like that. Ah, okay, good. So that is the confusion matrix. 
So getting that, you can calculate the value of recall and precision, and then you can get the value of F1. Okay, good. So I was able to finish it. So this, that's all the questions that I have for this session. And the important part for this session was RNN and uh, some Eposhi and uh, how these uh, deep learning techniques were learned. Uh, do the training. Transformers, I didn't cover that well. So if you feel that it is more important, then I, I would suggest you to uh, uh, watch some YouTube videos. Or maybe I'll share some link of the YouTube videos for that. Because I don't feel that that is very important because we don't go into that much detail when we are doing machine learning crops. Usually people will do deep learning um, and uh, convolution neural network, not transform. We don't even go for RNN uh, as a matter of fact. Okay, so if you have some questions, then uh, or some problem is there with the assignment, then you can ask now. And uh, because that's all for today's session, we'll, I'm going about to end this session. So we have any questions? You can ask if you have questions related to transformers also, you can ask. Uh, if I know, I will try to answer them. If I don't, maybe I will get back to you next week. Okay, thanks. Uh, thanks, Pulshan. So we have green parrot. Only two people, uh, two people joined. Yeah, I thought that today's uh, this week's assignment was simple, so not many people will join. Okay, then uh, that's all for today's session. Thanks for joining.